War is possible in Taiwan and China, and if war does break out, it could spread to other countries. The possibility of a world war is likely if this happens. Some of the questions being asked are, why is China sending so many warplanes into the air defense zone of Taiwan? And why has Taiwan's foreign minister said tensions between the two are at their worst in decades? The worry in the international community is that China is getting closer to invading Taiwan. A cross-strait invasion has been a possibility for decades. There's been a lot of speculation about war breaking out in the South China Sea, largely because of the increasing tensions between China and other countries in the region. Some speculate that this is because China is looking to gain control of the area, while others worry that a war could set off a chain reaction that could lead to the entire region falling apart. The majority of Taiwan's population sees themselves as part of China, while the Chinese government sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that should be reunified with mainland China. What you might not know is that, despite the tension, there are actually a number of strong economic ties between the two countries. Taiwan is a big market for Chinese products, and China is a big source of investment for Taiwan. Additionally, trade between the two is growing rapidly. The reason for this is that both countries see the potential for growth in the other. Our defense ministry is very determined in defending ourselves. Uh, we are willing to defend ourselves and it's without any question. And we will fight the war if we need to fight the war. And if we need to, uh, you know, to defend ourselves to the very last day, we will defend ourselves to the very last day. Do you have any thoughts on why the tension between Taiwan and China is so high? Taiwan, which is also known as Formosa, has a complicated history with China. Taiwan and China both call themselves China, even though most of the world sees mainland China as the only China. Taiwan, which is also called Formosa, has a complicated history with China. Taiwan refers to itself as the Republic of China and sees itself as an independent country. China, on the other hand, which is led by President Xi Jinping and officially known as the People's Republic of China, views Taiwan as part of China. At some point there's going to be a miscalculation, uh, and that would be dangerous for the entire region. U.S. officials say they're concerned by all the provocation here and warn China against hostile pressure. This is about China increasingly challenging American primacy in this part of the world, but also threatening to displace uh, the values that define us. The US War Department decided that since Taiwan was part of the Republic of China, they should get the same rights as the mainland. So when the war was over, they created the People's Republic of China and Taiwan became a renegade province. They talk to the mainland every day, but they still don't have the same rights. They think one day they will be unified, but they don't know when that will happen. The stark warning was issued during a meeting between U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Chinese Defense Minister General Wei Finger. In Singapore, the duo met on the sidelines of the Shangri-La Dialogue Security Summit. The statement from China has alarmed not just Taiwan but the entire Indo-Pacific region. The keenly watched meeting was intended to find a middle path of a number of contentious issues which includes South China Sea, human rights issues in Xinjiang province and Hong Kong. After Japan's defeat in World War II, China received the territories it had occupied, including Taiwan. However, this return also brought about a long and bloody civil war between the nationalists and communists. Between 1949 and the end of that year, 400,000 nationalists put up a last-ditch fight against overwhelming communist red numbers. By the end of 1949, the Communist Party and its Red Army, led by Mao Zedong, had defeated Chiang Kai-shek, who fled to Taiwan with more than a million of his anti-communist supporters. In 1949, the People's Republic of China was founded with its capital in Beijing. This was due to the split of the Chinese mainland into the mainland and the new Republic of China, Taiwan, following the Chinese Civil War. Throughout the Sino-Japanese War, 
the two Chinese factions continued planning to attack one another once the Japanese were driven from their country. In 1945, at the conclusion of World War II, the Chinese Civil War resumed. The fighting continued for another four years, with the Red Army of Mao Zedong eventually defeating Chiang Kai-shek's Chinese nationalists. Meanwhile, Chiang Kai-shek announced that Taipei would be the new temporary capital of the Republic of China and maintained that its government was the only legitimate authority in China. If you're wondering why Mao didn't just head over to Taiwan to finish the job and crush the nationalists, this is where the United States comes into the story. At Government House, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek greets men and women representing the hard core of military strength still under his command. <laughs> Back in the limelight, Chang receives the loyal greetings of his supporters. The fallen leader has a well-equipped and fully trained body behind him, useful reserves in the bitter struggle against communism in Asia. As the Korean War began in 1950, Western nations became increasingly worried about the spread of communism in the region. If the aggression in Korea was successful, it could spread throughout Asia and Europe, and even to this hemisphere. The United States established an alliance with the Chiang Kai-shek regime in an attempt to invade the People's Republic of China, which was more unlikely with war practically off the table. The situation quickly turned into a political fight for international recognition. Some people say Chiang Kai-shek was a dictator, but this is unfair. And it's slander. But because we were still against the communists in mainland China, he did impose martial law. Obviously, that is anti-democratic, but it was to protect Taiwan. His goal wasn't just to make Taiwan independent. He wanted to achieve freedom and democracy for the whole of China. He never gave up. He told us, don't ever think we've lost the mainland. Marxism will eventually fail. History proved him right. The Communist Party of China was not a recognized party until 1949, so the Western allies chose to back the communists. Meanwhile, the nationalist government of Korea led by So Kyung-shuk was also a founding member of the United Nations in 1945. However, the Korean government was backed by the United States, so the Western allies chose to recognize it. This led to a cold war between the two camps. There is a very high chance of a conflict breaking out in the next few years, as the Chinese military is rapidly expanding. However, this does not seem imminent, as there are many reasons why the Chinese would not use this newfound power at this point. There is a reason why militaries wait to go to war. The gap between their military power and the United States military power is smaller now than it has been in the past, but it is still very small. War is usually a last resort and countries with a lot to lose should be careful because it could go wrong. In addition to the fact that we are talking about two nuclear powers going head to head, what is at stake is not just Taiwan's status as a single entity, but China's international standing.